have you ever tried to draw a pose from a photo, but you don't want it to be bland and dull exactly like the photo? You want it to be stylistic, fun, and dynamic. Well, today we're going to be exploring how to draw any poses with dynamic style from photos. See this right here? You know, going slowly. You can still do this and still have it be stylistic. And obviously it will be a little bit more accurate to what you have there with the photo. But it's boring. Why do you want to be boring? Also, it's a chance to explore and have fun and truly make it your own versus just do what the photo did. Sometimes that's what it calls for, but sometimes you want to add a little sauce. So we're going to get rid of this. The way I like to do it is to have little tiny drawings. That way I'm just focused on getting the actual pose right, getting the vibe of what I want to do. Sometimes you might want to tweak the camera angle just a little bit and then add your dynamic fun and style. So here I'm taking the same pose, but putting the camera a slight tilt and in such a way where maybe the leg would feel a little bit more exaggerated, right? And I'm starting small because it's quicker for me to just draw. I'm just focused on getting the exact pose. That's it. I want that foot to really pop out towards the camera. I'm very cognizant of the anatomy of the character. So to do this, to be fair, you do need to understand the anatomy at least a little bit to have a decent understanding of anatomy. It will always come in handy. So here I'm doing that, having the bend, but then the other leg needs to show that depth and foreshadowing. Well, not foreshadowing, foreshortening. I'm putting that in the back. The leg popping towards us is exaggerated and in our face. Now I can select that, shift that up a little bit, maybe go over to one of the legs just to pull it down just a tiny bit. If you guys are enjoying this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything, unless we have beef. So you can see already how we've taken the same pose, barely changed anything, but just moving the camera a little bit, making everything a little bit more of a wide angle with that camera, and then pulling it below a little bit so we're looking up at the character, and then shifting the camera a little bit sideways just to, again, Overall, it just makes everything look a little bit more interesting, even though in a way we're copying this pose, copying this pose, this character, the clothing, all of that. So you can use this to study, you can use it to have fun, you can use it to create something new. There's a lot you can do. And then once I have the anatomy side of it kind of nailed, I can kind of blow it up and then ink it. And then also still, even in the sketch, add some of my artistic flair, my own art style with that, you know, usual anime manga touch to it. And it gives it a little bit of an edge. So I'm still gonna be drawing the same thing, but how would it look in my style, right? And I still want it to look like the reference as well. So I still want it to look like this person and my style at the same time. Tilt the drawing a little bit, make any adjustments where necessary. One of the juices about working digitally is that you can always come back to make edits. And especially in this sketch phase, doesn't really matter what's happening too much. Now, if you look at the overall drawing, you can see that really nice flow of action where it's all feeling like that one curved line from his head to his leg and it just it just it just gives it a, that dynamic juice you know what i'm saying so we expand it reduce the the opacity of the layer the sketch layer and then we go into the inking so just remember in this phase we worried about the camera angle tilting it to find something more fun and dynamic and then adding our own art style to really make it pop and make it our own now we're just doing the inking and here, even though I don't have all the details, I'm kind of filling it in. And this comes with experience where I don't need every single aspect of the sketch refined completely. I can just jump in with the black lines and just straight up ink. And if anything goes wrong, again, this is digital. You can just control Z, that is your friend. And you just keep doing it until you're right. I'm trying to get the shoes right because we have our basketball player pose right here. And a lot of the things that make it a really nice basketball pose and all the iconography to make this character a basketballer, the shoes, the ball, all of that needs to be on point and authentic. So I'm also still drawing inspiration and reference from the original and uh, making it still feel like that character, but maybe what they will look like in, in an anime or something like that. 
that was just for the lines. I'm doing the same thing with this other character, the same exact thing, no real difference. The pose here is a little bit simpler, but I still went through the same techniques, tweaking the camera angle a little bit for something more of a wide angle, some more uh, foreshortening in this aspect as well. Still getting the same pose, still being stylistic and you know adding my art style to it and having fun. Little tweaks here and there and just making sure everything looks cool and slick. So now adding the coloring and the shading, same rules apply, but obviously now, even though I'm looking at the shading from the original photo, I'm just looking for what that translation means in my art style versus following exactly what I'm looking at because sometimes, sometimes folks, that can be boring. You pick your light source, you go ham at it. And here I try to do something a little bit different than usual. So it's not just a layer adding the shading where that layer is a linear burn and reduced opacity and then like a dark version of a hue. I do that and then I do a similar layer, but instead of like doing this cell shading cartoon 2D animation style of shading approach, I gave everything a little bit of a gradient. And I also did do that mood layer, which is again, the same type of layer again, but it's more so filling up the character kind of like a silhouette and reducing the opacity to like 10%. I have another video on coloring that explains everything I'm talking about in greater detail if you're interested. But here I just wanted to get the shading. When it comes to the actual flats and the flat colors of what the characters are going to be, that I'm going to be pulling straight from the reference photos. But even then, even from the reference photos, I'm not going to be pulling the exact same thing because even those reference photos, maybe when those photos were taken, it's a photo shoot, there's some lights on it. You know, even though I'm using the eyedropper tool to grab the exact color, I might still change it, tweak it, uh, and pick something that's not exactly that, but just close to it, right? There's still a translation in my art style versus picking the exact thing, right? I'm still picking whatever I think would look best, but just referencing the reference photo, because that's all they're there for. We're here to make this our own, feel me? And this is me adding that gradient. I put a little bit more with an airbrush on like the foot that's behind and just certain aspects of the drawing just to make the coloring and the shading feel less dull. And once that's done, I can then start to put in the flats. Again, some of the flats is me using an eyedropper and maybe tweaking the hue just a little bit, but I'm just putting the flats on a separate layer. And then when I want to see the whole illustration done together, I just turn on all the layers and voila. So here we are taking a photo, using it as reference, pretty much drawing the same thing, but making it our own by tweaking the camera, exaggerating here and there, making it a wide angle, keeping it dynamic, even in the way we shade and color, and then doing it in our art style from the pose, the way we do everything, drawing the face down to the coloring and the shading, where, as you saw, we did use reference, but it does feel like its own thing. Really trying to give this channel a little bit more juice. Please do all the engagement stuff. It helps out a great deal unless we have beef. Two and a half people that made it to the end of this video. I thank you. And check out this video where I go into a little bit more detail on coloring and shading. Get my manga volume one to four if you haven't already. Or our how to draw diverse manga book. Links in the description. Swipe manga. And I'm Audi 9000.